Hello Internet, and welcome to my beginner tutorial on UV Resin. Now, I've been a UV Resin hobbyist for about three years now, and I think I've definitely picked up some tricks that may help you get started. Now, this video is an overview video for complete beginners. I plan on making a bunch more that go in-depth with certain aspects like alcohol inks or dip resin. I was going to make it into one giant video, but YouTube told me that their viewers don't like that. Plus, it'll probably be easier for you to pick and choose what you want to learn about. So let's go ahead and get started with the safety and basics. UV resin is a synthetic resin, a viscous substance that converts into a rigid polymer by the process of curing, which in UV resin's case is a UV light. And yes, the sun is a UV light, but I find it's not the best and takes almost twice as long to cure. I have a flashlight and a flood lamp that's actually used for making t-shirts. The stronger the light, the faster it will cure. But UV can be dangerous. Just look up all the horrible things that happen to people in sun tanning beds. Or what happens to you if you stare at the sun for too long. Speaking of dangers, UV resin has a few. Curing is a chemical process, and you really shouldn't be breathing it in. And it's not as severe as two-part resin, but I would recommend wearing a mask. And also, don't forget gloves. People can be horribly allergic to this. Now, if you've seen some of my other videos on this subject, you could call me out for not wearing them. It's kind of a risk that I take because disposable gloves are a huge waste problem, but it's really not something you want on your hands. Again, this is a chemical. Besides the allergic reaction, if it does cure to your skin, it's not going to come off without that skin. Also, safety glasses, if you don't want it on your skin, you don't want it on your eyes. Now, after you've gone and googled all the side effects you can have from resin and never even want to touch the stuff, let's get to why people use it in the first place. Originally, it was a glue. I mean, it still is a glue, but most of us aren't into the hobby of gluing things together, though I won't judge you. Resin has blown up over the past few years due to the ability to make mostly anything out of it, plus when it's cured, it's waterproof. The only thing you really can't do with it is heat it up, because you can actually reverse part of the curing process or just burn it. But as long as you're not using it with fire or laser engraving on it, you'll be okay. I think one of the reasons I like it is because I like to collect things, and not only do you get to collect every shape of mold there is, there's also bezels, a million different kinds of mix-ins, like little metal shapes, golden flakes, get little plastic tiny fruits, glitters, so many glitters. Then you have all the colorants you can collect, like liquid dyes, mica pigments. Plus you can use it in a lot of different crafts, like wire art, miniatures, or polymer clay. You can make so much with UV resin that this video would be a hundred hours long just mentioning everything you could make. So let's talk about the different kinds of resin there are. You can get the clear stuff, which is what I mainly use because I like to mix my own colors. But you can get pre-colored stuff. There's also gummy and dip UV resin, which I'll both do their own separate video on. And there's also all the different kinds of brands. There's a lot, everybody's got their favorite, you're probably gonna have to try different ones to see what you like. I personally like Decor Rom, and I'm also going to be using some Let's Resin, because I happen to have some. I do find the Let's Resin shrinks a little bit, which can happen in resin projects, so just be careful with that. So let's go ahead and get started, I have three basic projects for you. The first is if you just bought a beginner kit, the second is if you want to make specifically earrings, and the third is Walmart art. For people who got some UV resin online, but didn't buy anything to go with it, and the nearest art store is an hour away. <laughs> so the first, a keychain, using this mold and this mold. They come with every resin kit I've seen. Well, almost everyone. All you have to do is pour UV resin into the mold slot of your choice, then hit it with your light. Times depend on your resin and how strong the light is. You can usually tell, but if you're not sure, just tap it with a tooth and boom, there you go. What? That's not what you wanted to make? You didn't want to make a clear keychain? All right, we'll go a little bit harder. But honestly, that's how you make anything with a mold. Most problems I see happen are either when you don't leave it curing long enough or when you put way too much stuff inside it. Remember, the resin will only cure if the light can hit all the resin. You can cure the outside without curing the inside. So let's go ahead and add some liquid dye drops to this one. Toothpicks are seriously your friend. You can also get silicone tools, I just don't happen to have any right now. But the process is the same. Pour some resin in the mold, then drop in some colorants. Now we can either leave it or you can blow it around with a straw. And yes, the heat gun would work, but unless you have a low power one, 
you'll be blowing it all over the place. You can also drag it with a toothpick. You can also mix it together if you want it to just be that color. It's so much fun to pop it out of the mold and see what the front looks like. With molds like these, both sides can be the front, depending on which one looks better. In some molds, like this snake one, the front is the inside of the mold, so just remember that when you're doing your designs. And while I have this snake mold out, let's go ahead and make some earrings out of it, along with some more simple stud earrings. So this mold has two types of snakes, one with a scale texture and one without. I'll make both to show you the difference. So let's go ahead and mix up two different colors of green using mica powders. These little silicone bowls are the best, by the way. I'll show you how easy they are to clean at the end. Please be careful when you're mixing your colors. If it is too pigmented, it will not cure. So use a very little and then you can always add more. If you want to check if your color is okay or not, you can shine a normal flashlight and if you can see through it, then it should cure okay. But besides that, all you do is the same thing you did before. Except I'm going to make an easy gradient with these greens by using a toothpick to drop the different colors in different places. Doing the same with the stud earrings. And then go ahead and hit them with your light. Now this green isn't super opaque, but putting colors in the resin will make it take a bit longer than usual. So please check it with the toothpick before popping them out. You do not want uncured resin on your hands. And I definitely made these greens way too close together. On my camera, it doesn't even look like they're different, but I promise in person it does. And speaking of something that's hard to show on my camera is the texture on this snake and the stud, but I promise they're there. So let's go ahead and do some cleanup. So let's go ahead and do some cleanup and finish these pieces off. First, you can knock off any little bits of extra resin. You could also sand them off if they were really thick, but that creates a lot of dust, so it's mostly easier just to break them off. And then you could also sand off the raised edges on the back of your piece, but I'm going to dome it because it makes less of a mess. Now you could dome this with clear resin if you've used up all your color, but I find it looks better with the same color. Not that you have to do this at all if you're just making them to wear yourself, but it's good to get into the habit of finishing your pieces. Plus, while you're curing your domes on the back, you can hit the silicone bowls to cure the resin that's left inside those. And then that just pops out and you have a nice clean bowl to use. So after everything is cured, then it's time to add the earring posts or hangers, depending on what you like. So I also quickly made up the pairs to the snakes and some white round studs. So to add the post, just add some super glue to the back and stick it together. You could use resin, I just find it's a bit easier to use super glue. And if you want to add the hangers to your snakes, for instance, you can drill a hole through it. Or buy a mold that already has the hole in it. And then put the round metal piece through the hole and close it. I know that wasn't super in depth, and I'll have to make another video on just earrings. This one's already a bit long, but as a fun way you can use these studs if you don't want to drill a hole through your snake, you can just put it right here and then it looks like it's wrapped around an egg. I think these are definitely my favorites. And now for the Walmart art. I'm not going to lie, I had a lot of fun going into Walmart trying to figure out what I could make that was cheap and beginner friendly. So what I decided on was wire art, specifically a dragonfly. Wire art is a really awesome art that you can do with or without resin. And it's definitely the hardest of all the projects we've done so far. But I believe in you. Here's what you need. So if you were smart, you would print out or draw a base picture to follow. But I just decided I wanted to do it from memory to make my life more complicated. So, jumping in, we need two pairs of wings, which I got by cutting two long strips of the floral wire, then twisting them together about a hundred times because I didn't have a reference picture. And for the body, I use this earring sizer, but you could use anything round. And then you twist four rings going from big to small. And then you can twist a little tail at the end. And after that, I thought the wings were too small for the body I made, so I made another pair. And then resined them in a crisscross pattern. A little tip, as soon as the UV light hits the resin, it turns instantly into a solid. So have your light ready when you do this. I waited a bit too long and there's a bit of a flat puddle on the back, but we're gonna cover it up so it's fine. And now for the wings. So I do one wing at a time. If you think you could do all four, I'm not gonna stop you. But getting one wing to be level was hard enough as is. So let's grab some clear tape, then stick it to the back of your wing. Press down, making sure the wire is down on all sides. My tape was real light, so it kept lifting. So I just used some stuff to make it lay flat. And now I used some Sophie and Toffee red crystal resin that I had. 
but you can use clear. Whatever glitters you got will add some color. Now my glitters are clear, so it doesn't matter, but if yours are solid, be careful how much you add. This is a thin layer, so you shouldn't have any problem with curing, but it will definitely make a mess if you take this tape off before it's cured. And then you can just go ahead and do that three more times. Check it out, it's looking pretty cool. Now we just go ahead and dome the backs of the wings, and the fronts if you have glitter sticking out. Then go ahead and add the wings to your body at the biggest piece. Don't worry, we'll add the head on after. And now for the real fun part. Now have your light ready and just go ahead and add resin. First a nice flat layer, and then we're going to build up the layers. The longer you leave the resin before hitting it, the more it will flood out. So just keep that in mind as you're drawing your lines upwards and just repeat until you're happy with the shape of your body. And then we can do the same for the head. You could make a wire form for it, but dragonflies have kind of like flat heads when you look at them from the top, so I figured I'd try my luck without it. Now, if you really mess up here, you can sand it into the shape that you would like, but I think I did a pretty good job. I'd also like to say, if you've made it this far, good job. Even if you messed up, I promise you'll get better. And even if you don't, the point of a hobby is to have fun. So you've won as long as that's happened at least once during this video. And now that all the hard parts are done, all we have to do is paint it. Now of course you could leave it clear, especially if you were putting it in a window. But I'm adding a clip to mine so I can add it around to things. I'm gonna paint the body black. And I'm going to use nail polish. Because you can, and I just wanted you to know that. And then I'm going to use this really cool red-orange color shift to spice it up when the light hits it. And as a final step, you can use a clear coat. You can either use more resin, use an acrylic spray, or clear nail polish. And I find that this works the best because if you, all you want is a tiny thin layer, you can just add it without the need for an acrylic spray to go outside or adding more resin usually makes it thicker. I do recommend buying the good clear nail polish though. That way it lasts longer. And then you can go ahead and glue on your clip or your pin and start sticking it to things. I like to put it on the fake vines I have in my trailer or in a headband if I want to be that person that's like, look, I made this thing. So what was your favorite project? I know this video was kind of long and I'm grateful you made it all the way through. I hope you learned a little something and had a little fun. I'll be making more pinpointed resin videos in the future, so if there's anything you want to see specifically, let me know down below and do the other stuff if you want to see those videos. So thanks everyone for watching, and I'll see you guys next time. Bye bye